The Florida Panthers finished with a 2-1 and one record in the Southeast Rookie Showcase. We talk about the players who stood out, what the coaching staff and players said, and the players who spoke at the Florida Panthers Golf Classic looking forward to the upcoming season. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into this Tuesday, September 19th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. I'm Armando Velez from the Hockey News, and you can follow me on X at Monoman12. Follow the show account on X and Instagram at LO underscore FLA Panthers. And shout out to the everydayers who come back here and get your daily Florida Panthers fix. So, Panther fans, want to first of all say apologies for no episode yesterday, as yesterday was a travel day for me, waking up pretty early to head to Estero for Game 3 of the Rookie Showcase, was in Estero, and then made the short drive down Alligator Alley, and now I am in South Florida, where later on today at 2 p.m., the Florida Panthers will be announcing the official name of their arena Later today, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we'll be discussing more of that on Wednesday's edition of the show. So what, let's get right into rookie showcase for the Cats rookies and all. And you, and with uh, with game one being on the Friday night, it was it was a game for the Florida Panthers where they kind of struggled out of the gate where the where the Carolina Hurricanes re- basically controlled play through the first uh two periods there were lots of penalties for the for the for the Panthers went to the box quite a few times uh the P- Panthers were down five on three with the too many men on the ice and a and a, cr- and a cross checking penalty by Evan Naus in 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 that one and you know quite a few mistakes and what we could we could see a little bit more development out of Evan Naus because on one of the goals uh he, he was uh checked out of um checked at the boards and and it resulted in a Carolina goal and that one was actually when the Carolina Hurricanes went up Three nothing, and Matt Gusta stood on his head despite the 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 huge deficit by the Carolina Hurricanes in in this one. So it was all about penalty cr- trouble. The Panthers had a hard time breaking out of their zone. Uh, Merrick Alsher had uh, the the puck checked out of his stick, and then it, it ended up in a, uh, sc- a scoring chance by Noel Gunther in, in the slot for a one timer. And uh, but the Florida Panthers did get a goal on on the night. Um, thanks to Kai Schwent off a faceoff win. Leon Ardsby got it back from the boards, took a few strides, and then uh, shot a wrister, wrister to make it 3-1 at the time. But the Florida Panthers could not uh, get get through and unfortunately lost that one by a final score of 4-1. Uh, to one. But, you know, the Florida Panthers, they were starting to move the puck a lot better in the, in, in the first game, especially with Mike Benning uh, in... in the first game, great moving the puck. Maybe maybe you'll see him quarterback in the power play in Charlotte this upcoming season. In in this one, the Florida Panthers lost the shootout one nothing against the Carolina Hurricanes. The Panthers did not get a single goal in in the shootout as well. And Matt Gusta doing doing his best trying to stand on his head despite a lot of penalty trouble by the Florida Panthers in game two. Uh, Ludovic Weber. Uh, 27 years old uh, spoke about spoke about really playing in North America, getting used to the North American ice, and and talk about mostly hey, um, it's it's a big adjustment, but it's not like he doesn't know how to play hockey and uh, make 38 of 40 saves on 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 the night. And this is the thing: the Florida Panthers, you know, they they it took a little bit to get their legs moving. Jordy Kinnear also spoke about how after their practice on Thursday, you know, there was a little bit of nervousness for for the group there. And and there was a lot of physicality. Two fights: one from Josh Davies, one from Riley Bizo. And I mean, Josh Davies just such a fun player to to watch play hockey. And and sending a uh, Joachim Kamel to the to the boards um, it, it, very early on in the game. Nashville went up uh, uh, with uh, Luke Evangelista getting the puck from behind the net, uh, half wall from the side of the net, and then and then snuck the uh, shot past uh, Ludovic Faber. And 
you know, um, Ludovich Faber also get got the Panthers uh, back in this game by making timely saves, and then uh, the Panthers were able to convert on the on the power play. Santu Kinnunen from the left point deflected from uh, Josh Davies into the net. So Josh Davies in net front presence that would not be his first uh, time he would he would be in front of the net to create a goal for the Panthers throughout the rookie showcase. A uh, little bit of stick trouble for for the Panthers as well. We spoke about Evan Noss earlier. Another one was Justin sort of, uh, you know, with, with an inter- interference call um, and a little bit out of position. Also in the third game against the Tampa Bay Lightning, he went to the box quite a few times as well. So a little bit of of work that needs to be done uh, down in Charlotte uh, this year. But the the Florida Panthers, uh, uh, but with sort of also did draw an inter- interference uh, as well. Uh, with six minutes to go, uh, and the Panthers were able to convert uh, where Ryan McAllister took a few strides and then uh, beats uh, Griggle's uh, blocker side to make it 2-1. And then Sandus Vilmanis got uh, a mini breakaway to start the the third period uh, right off the neutral zone, skated through uh, through and scored backhand. So Sandus Vilmanis is uh, definitely, uh, definitely on the upward trajectory, in my opinion, as far as someone who is uh developing uh well as he's gonna be playing another season with the sarnia stings but uh the 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 predators did make it close towards the end but but ludovic favor came up tall for the florida panthers and they were uh, able to come back um to not, not come back to keep their lead uh in in the in in this one and in the shootout the florida panthers did lose the shootout as well both of the goals that the national predators did did score went through the five hole of ludovic weber something i'm i'm sure he is thinking about as as far as as far as the as far as positioning getting into the butterfly position as as well and uh and also bizu had a fight but also um he was able to win a puck battle uh where he was able to get one off the the right wing boards and um, got Grigal's late to his post as far as, as as that as well. And in the third game, the Tampa Bay Lightning controlled play for the first ten minutes of the game. It took eleven minutes for the Florida Panthers to get their first shot on goal. The Panthers were down five on three at, at one point uh, due due to uh, a, a tripping call on Justin Sordiff and then Skylar Brindamore uh, tripping near the blue line so they had like 30 ish seconds of, of five on three play seven shots on goal for the tampa bay lightning on the five on on the uh, during that span on the five on three as well and panthers were getting their opportunities it looked to have their first shot of the game with jake wise but hit the post but then it didn't come until 11 minutes in when uh when zachary ewens uh shot from the high slot after a, cl- a failed clear by by the tampa bay lightning but Thankfully, the Florida Panthers did uh, get a power play goal by Maki Semoskevich, the 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 one who was able to draw that penalty was Mike Benning. Uh, Mike Benning, quick to break out of his zone, drew two penalties on on the day, and just the the unit, the power play one unit of Jake Wise, Justin Sort of, Josh Davies, Mike Benning, and Maki Semoskevich. That unit, especially on on in Game Three, they were moving the puck so well. Uh, get getting having getting one Tampa Bay Lightning player to draw towards it to find an open man out in the bumper or or down in the in front of the net and with Mackey's uh, goal screened by Josh Davies right out in front taking the eyes away from Hugo and NFL and that was their third shot of the game at 12:59 in 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 the in the first period so three shots through 12 minutes it was a it was the way I could describe the third game of this was a very opportunistic. Uh, game for the florida panthers and really jordy kinnear spoke about after the game how they the tampa bay lightning got to their agenda early and that it's about settling down talk about it i'm talking about it at around the bench about calming the mind too right before getting uh, on on the ice as well and at one point the florida panthers drew six consecutive penalties including a double minor where uh right before a face-off Mackey got hit in in up in the face uh right before and both the second and the third period the florida panthers went into those periods with the man advantage something you're going to take if you are uh jordy kinnear surviving a 16 to 6 shot on goal advantage from tampa bay and then get and then uh, converting when you have to you're you're, you're you you got to be 
quite pleased. Uh, but also credit to Matt Gusta for keeping the the Panthers in, in this one. Wilmer Skoog was very, excuse me, Skog, that's how you pronounce it, uh, according to Doug Plagans on the broadcast. I had it in my ear as I was watching it at the arena. Um, and very noticeable in the in the in the second period as well as he circled back, back from the corner to the trapezoid to drop um, to draw a penalty as well. Mackie Semeskevich almost had his second goal on the on the on the afternoon, but just missed the missed the post as well. But Skoog was Skog, excuse me, was right place, right time as Riley Bizzo was checked, uh, had the puck checked out of his stick. Three Tampa Bay Lightning players were were drawing towards Bizzo and and they didn't pick up the trailer in Skog, and he gets a mini breakaway, shoots from the slot to to beat uh, NFL to make it uh, two nothing for the Florida Panthers, and also got uh, uh, was quick to uh, the the half wall to get an opportunity for Zachary Ewens, who scary moment for Ewens at the end of the game where he took a shot off the off his uh, off his helmet neck head neck area um, with 33 seconds left in the game. I, I mean, the Florida Panthers were down six on four with 33 seconds, up three two. The Tampa Bay Lightning made it very, uh, very close uh, towards the towards the end, and and they never seemed to go away, even in a prospect showcase. Uh, the the where the Tampa Bay Lightning score one forty four into the into the period, and even uh, even that's where the undisciplined play for the Panthers were starting uh, as well, where Davies goes into the box for hooking. There's four on four hockey for for both the Panthers and, and Lightning as Kali Shalin. And Felix Robert were going to the box for roughing. They're uh, even on four on four uh, on the goal that cut the lead to three to two. Evan Nels would have gone to the box for slashing, but the but the Tampa Bay Lightning score on the delayed penalty as well. But they were able to to survive. They were able to win on the uh, on uh, after being down for six six on four when with the goalie pulled in in the final seconds, and the and the Panthers were able to. Uh, to get out of it. And they did score in the shootout this time around in the final one. Mackie Semeskevich with some beautiful hands as well, um, where where he was able to fool NFL. And and Kai Schwint uh, scored in the first game, scores in the shootout as well, uh, beats uh, NFL blocker side. And Matt Gusta, where, where where he was 33 of 35 on on, on in the afternoon, uh, does not allow a single goal during the during the shootout so some of the some of the guys who who were just incredible throughout the weekend and matt gusta trying to build off his 897 save percentage in charlotte last year uh maybe this is the start of something uh to build off of when when it comes to another season down in the ahl but we're going to transition over to segment number two where we're going to discuss more about who who stood out who who we could see improve coming this season and prepare for another uh training camp ahead as the Florida Panthers will be playing a split squad game next Monday, which we'll see a lot of the prospects. We're going to discuss that more here on the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast. But first, we're going to tell you all about FanDuel. Snap into the NFL action this season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to join in on the action, especially with the Miami Dolphins. They're 2-0, and both games won on the road. Their home opener is this week against the Denver Broncos. The Denver Broncos are 0-2. So if you want to place your bets on the Miami Dolphins, especially with Tua Tagovailoa being the front runner for the MVP, you might want to sprinkle in something a little bit on those Miami Dolphins. You could, and the app is super easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Segment number two here on this Tuesday, September 19th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Thank you once again for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. and. For guys who impressed, guys who could have a few things to work on as far as as far as their game going into uh, th- this season, and guys who impressed, obviously Mackie Semeskevich, uh, that it was to be expected, and Mackie spoke about after the third game about 
being accumulated to Florida. Spoke about it's a little too hot for his liking as the guy from Newtown, Connecticut, and going through the um, through the USA Development Program to the University of Michigan. He's not used to the weather down here, but he also spoke about being around the rink, around the guys, having an Airbnb with Evan Nouse and skating with the current roster for the Florida Panthers. A reminder with training camp starting Thursday, it, it can only be the players. According to the CBA, the coaches and players can't come together until Thursday for the, for the Panthers. So just the players are getting together there. Spoke a lot about it as well. Mike Benning spoke prior to even any, either of the games of uh, just on the practice on Thursday, spoke about how um, spoke about his NCAA college experience and spoke about the guys uh, he knew from the other side, but no friends on the ice. Uh, spoke about the guys he knew from Luke Prokop to Jack Finley as as well, and also some of the guys who um, who you know need a little bit of work on. Merrick Alsher about breaking out of his zone and 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 win, winning puck battles as his body's starting to develop. Did spoke about putting in a little bit of muscle um, during in between uh, D camp and pro, and rookie showcase. And very, he's very excited to also play with Josh Davies out in uh, Portland in the WHL this year. And I also had an opportunity to speak with son of head, um, Panthers head coach Paul Maurice, Jake Maurice, who is the play-by-play -play broadcaster for the Florida Everblades. Him and I spoke about the excitement that Merrick Alsher and Josh Davies are going to have in the in the WHL this season with the Portland Winter Hawks being a better team. Uh, than the Swift Current Broncos, and and that it should create more opportunities for uh, both of them. Merrick Alsher already having a season under his belt there. Josh Davies is going to be spending his first uh, season here. Uh, Matt Gusta also spoke about how it's a huge year for development for, for him, especially last year where there was a lot of uncertainty with the NHL roster coming up and down, being even though he was with the Florida Panthers and he could be sent back, back and forth without any waivers. It threw his game off a little bit Come, coming to the Florida Panthers and not even playing a game, just being there for basically an emergency basis is as well. And I can see how that can throw off somebody's game as well, as far as, as, as that. So uh, maybe that could, especially with how he ended rookie showcase, uh, Hopefully we are seeing a, a improvement on the 897 save percentage and, and really stood stood tall um towards the towards the their uh their playoff matchup against the Hershey Bears but just couldn't uh could just couldn't get through for the when losing against the eventual uh Calder Cup uh champions Kai Schwent uh a brother of Cole Schwent who the Florida Panthers traded in the Matthew Gachuk trade um another another year in Mississauga for the in the OHL uh and and gave a lot of credit for Matt Gusta after the first game for uh, standing on his head. Justin Sordiff. Really, we're starting to see Justin Sordiff as an all-situations type of player, playing on the penalty kill, playing on the power play, fast skater, quick to pucks as well. Uh, spoke about after the first game how you never want to lose, and even in a rookie showcase, and spoke about his leadership, paying it forward after last year coming into his first rookie showcase, and now he's he feels that he needs to be the, the leader in the locker room and spoke about how excited he was to play on the same line as uh Mackie Samuskevich. Ryan McAllister also spoke about the physicality in the, in the, in the sec in the second game as he, he got a goal um, as, as, as well. And really loved how Riley Buzu and Josh Davies uh, st stood up for the, for, for their teammates as well. And Sanders Vilmanis uh, spoke about his goal and, and, and guys committing. And he was uh it, and, Basically, Sanis Vilmanis' goal is basically what the the definition of instincts when it comes to when it comes to being quick to pucks and being at the right place at the right time. Also, gives a lot of credit to Ludovic Weber um, and says that score could have been a lot closer if it wasn't for him and Weber. Um, like we said earlier, he says that the that it's not like he knows doesn't know how to play hockey, even though he's an older veteran, even though he's has, is is on an ELC, being twenty seven years old, he is going to have ufa status coming into this season so not a lot of room for error for ludovic weber as he's going to get quite a few starts in in charlotte as far as the panthers roster and the big league club you know uh 
there's a lot that would need to happen for him to get uh, to a game and spoke about how much of a dream it, it is for, for him. Uh, other players who got an opportunity to speak, Nathan Stales and Zachary Ewens, who both won championship a championship with the Florida Everblades this season, even though Nathan Stales didn't finish the season. Both of their names are on the on the Kelly Cup. Did ask Nathan Stales about how much, how big this last year was for him and his family with him winning the the Kelly Cup and the rumors of his dad, Steve Stales, possibly taking a role with the Ottawa Senators and spoke about, you know, how how it's great to be around a great group of guys. And also, but also he also told me that he couldn't speak on behalf of his dad, but he's look he once the sale of the Ottawa Senators goes final that we could get more clarity on what Steve Stales' role will be with the with the with the Sens. Ewan uh, spoke about how there's a lot of older guys on the Florida Everblades who have never won anything. So it doesn't come often even in a even in the ECHL as as well. And you know, Jordy Kinnear also spoke about how the guys uh, how how with the rough 10 minutes in the in the first period in in the last game of the rookie showcase how you know the 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 lightning were quick to get to their agenda it's all about composure and and needing to settle down in the mind something i spoke about earlier in, in the show as as well i did have an opportunity to ask Maki Semiskevich on his comfort level uh with Jordy Kinnear playing a, a few games in the regular season and some playoff games seven playoff games to be exact coming from the University of Michigan, being a black ace. And he said he 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 loves he loves his relationship with uh, Jordy Kinnear and Brian McCabe as well. Spoke a lot during the summer. And and there's a, a lot of uh, mentorship and saying that uh, Jordy Kinnear is a guy that really know, knows hockey. Another another player who is uh, quick uh, down the middle and, uh, and not afraid to to get to even skate through defenders was Grayson Sachin, the Florida Panthers' most recent second-round pick, uh, who had some family here, uh, was walking, just walking around the press box to her, in Hertz Arena and seeing some Sachin jerseys, uh, all the way in, uh, all the way in the two three nine, and wondering, hmm, does he have family here and, at the game? Jameson Olive was able to ask him that, and yeah, uh, he did have a family uh, there, and. You know, he spoke about how the little things are more important based on fixing his game and and what he can take back to uh, to C- for the Seattle Thunderbirds, uh, where he averaged a point per game uh, th- this season. Definitely something that he could, in fact, uh, take away as 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 a guy who slipped in the draft and possibly a, a possible steal for the Florida Panthers uh, as he is looking to develop more and more. But we're going to transition over to segment number three, where we are going to discuss what the Florida Panthers players spoke about at the Panthers Golf Classic. And we are going to be looking forward to uh, an an arena announcement and a media day coming this Wednesday. We are going to discuss that more here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. But first, we're going to tell you all about Jace. Medical and the Jace case provides five life saving antibiotics for emergency use. All it takes is to, to take a Jace case is to fill out a simple online form and, in some cases, jump on a quick call with one of our board certified physicians. Get ongoing care from our physicians on any treatment related questions. Doctor created, doctor recommended. Don't be caught unprepared. Everybody could be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. Jace handles everything from online evaluation, licensed pharmacy, medication, delivery, and ongoing consultation and care. And you can use promo code locked on to get 20% off and, and to get $20 off your order at jacemedical.com. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J A S E medical.com. Third and final segment here on this Tuesday, September 19th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Thank you once again for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. And Cats fans, I'm very excited. It's great to have hockey back. It's great to be back in a rink as well and to be 
providing you with some content here as we are putting more on the schedule now with the season coming up with the summer having three ish four ish episodes a week now we are back to our four to five every week and sometimes you might have two episodes a day coming up so get pumped panther fans because it's definitely going to be um we're pull uh, we're going through the content machine as far as that and also once again uh if you want to check out my articles at the hockeynews.com uh you can check me and david dork's work uh there as well and but the florida panthers did host their golf classic on monday and my my colleague david dork was there while i was i was covering game three of the rookie showcase there and a few of the players who got a chance to speak to the media were Nick Cousins, and start off with him, spoke about how uh, the Stanley Cup final run was the most fun he's had, and and also discuss about what another year playing under Paul Maurice can do and, and can do wonders for the Florida Panthers. And that's something I've been speaking about all throughout the offseason, how because you have some, some guys in place, the head coach, the two superstars and Matthew Kachuk and Alexander Barkov, that there's a possibility for there to be a holding of the fort when it comes to, and this is something that we've spoken about all off season with the injuries of Brandon Montour and Aaron Eckblad, which there was another yet another video of Brandon Montour's rehab that re that surfaced on the internet. So a great feeling for Florida Panthers fans as they're going to get at least one of their star defensemen back sooner hopefully rather than later and looks to that november timeline for montour who's just seems like a machine out there in his rehab video um lo looks to be that he is going to return uh pretty soon and nick cousins also spoke about how it's nice to chirp of uh, for, for guys on the, in their golf swing and also gave a lot of credit to sergey bobrovsky as, as well uh, alexander barkov also spoke that he didn't feel like it was a short off season but playing uh, hockey in June is something that you want and, and that, that, you know, he got in the groove of things, took it, took some time off to watch some tennis at Wimbledon as well. And, and also, uh, and also uh, likes the, the community aspect of what the Florida Panthers golf classic brings. Carver Hagee spoke about making an Eagle, something I wish I could say as far as my golf game, but kind of jealous of uh, Carver Hagee making an Eagle and also spoke about his playlist as well on what he likes to play there and spoke about the country music playlist as well for, for himself as well. And Sam Reinhart, the last person to, to speak uh, as well. Also, Matthew Kachuk had an opportunity to speak, spoke about his health uh, and that he is ready to go for the season. I mean, if you saw the videos surface on the internet of him and Brady Kachuk taking a face-off in the media tour in Las Vegas, you see that there's, uh, that there are, that there are, Seem, doesn't seem to be issues with Matthew Kachuk's uh, broken sternum. Also, Brady Kachuk also uh, spoke about how it was like helping his brother get to the rink a game, in game four after breaking his sternum. And uh, Matthew Kachuk uh, told Brady that when he sneezed, he crapped himself and felt like he was going to die. That's how bad the broken sternum felt for Matthew Kachuk, as Brady Kachuk described it. But Sam Reinhardt, going to Sam Reinhardt, the last, uh, the last person as far as speaking at the Panthers golf classic, which Sam Reinhardt, uh, I noticed the hat that he was wearing and it was the Valspar championship hat with the Tiger Woods logo and the Valspar championship for those who aren't really into golf. Uh, the Valspar championship was the beginning of Tiger Woods comeback to finally winning a PGA tour event, which, which he eventually won at East Lake at the tour championship. But Valspar earlier that year was the year where Tiger Woods was starting to make a run uh, throughout the weekend, but eventually finished runner up behind Paul Casey and Valspar championship is also a tournament that happens in Florida at Palm Harbor, just North of Tampa. Um, so just notice the, the, the logos, the Tiger Woods, the, the Valspar, but going to the, going towards the golf side of things and the hockey side, rumor has it that Sam Reinhart is the best golfer on the team. Uh, spoke about that a little bit and he's, said that guys might be a little rusty uh with it with it being hot as, as well 
and spoke about also the Stanley Cup final run is like taking all the experience that you you can and and trying to um, build off it. And Sam Reinhart, not a man of a lot of words, uh, to really had a lot to speak on when it comes to uh, the run for for the final for the Panthers in in the Stanley Cup final. So uh, the guys just seem ready to get back um, on on the ice to to just uh build off what they what they did last year and but at the same time with the season coming up there you can't you can't just go into the mindset and and saying oh they made the stanley cup final it's a guarantee it's all it's all a big reset too it you all you got to start all over but like, like we said things are in place as far as a foundation for this florida panthers team and i think that's gonna really help as far as confidence, as far as getting through uh, some some tough some tough times to begin the season, a, a, as well. So definitely, definitely, uh, the you could smell that that hockey season is is approaching. But that that's going to do it for this edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. On Wednesday, we are going to be bringing in Jacob Winans for another edition of Winans Wednesday. We are going to be discussing Spencer Knight opening up about his NHL slash NHL PA uh, being in the players assistance program and opening up about that. We are going to discuss what are we expecting from media day and more details on the new arena name as it is going to be officially announced later today at 2 p.m. from what's supposedly called the new name. Emirate Bank Arena. But in the meantime, if you like what you're hearing, please subscribe to the podcast and be notified every single time the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast jumps into your podcast feed. Don't forget to also subscribe to the other shows on the Locked On NHL Network, including Locked On NHL, Locked On Fantasy Hockey with Flip Livingstone and Sierra Roden, and Locked On NHL Prospects. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. So I'm Armando Velez, signing off. And you've been listening to Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day.